Weathers Great House Tag Team. Welcome. I didn't know what kind of questions y'all would be asking. Oh, sorry. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, so, Commander Great House is here, and Assistant Chief Lowe is here. Uh, to answer any other technical questions. Well, I guess I know there's a press conference yesterday and, and I think since it's on the docket here, if you could just go ahead and give us an update of where we are so because we're going to be making a decision if we're going to, because we're in a pilot, pilot project right now. I think that started in March, so we're six months in or thereabouts and we were, it was supposed to be a year, but it's coming forward a little sooner than the pilot project is complete, but it might be, the time it might be right. So if you could just give us an update where we stand on it and why you're um, wanting to do it sooner than the, the pilot project is over. Uh, um, basically what we've been seeing uh, is we've been seeing uh, market success uh, of the program. Uh, we got to looking at uh, how things were going uh, according to the national economy and, and other things. So um, we already had the funds set aside for it. Um, it didn't make sense if we were seeing this kind of success. And we're not even just seeing success here. We looked at other communities, other cities that have it, and they've expanded it because of the success, the, re uh, the ability to apprehend criminals uh, from our standpoint. Um, there's been a decline in people wanting to talk to the police. So this, uh, this technology has allowed us to further investigations even when we don't get the cooperation we need. And I'm not saying that in any means to uh, say that people don't need to talk to us. We still need people to talk to us, but every little bit helps. Um, so presently we have 25, and then we're looking at um, expand that to 100, the, the 75, and the money that's that was put aside in this budget, the 236,000, that will take care of that. Yes. Now that will be for this year, fiscal year 23, and then going forward, will we, will there be that? Um, what's the number that will be going forward from that? If we I'll continue let, the, I'll let Commander Greathouse come and talk to you about that. And one of the other issues, and Chief, one of you might be able to answer this. One of the issues I asked when we first. Were, were was brought this about um, if they were going to be identified where they were and initially they weren't but I think now that 100 are that might change so that's another issue I think I'd like to have right. answer and, and during the pilot program we only had 25 and we thought it'd be better not to let people know where they were so we could get an honest assessment of how those 25 cameras uh, would operate uh, I think uh, we've seen that uh, they've been successful for us, and adding the 75, I, you know, I, I don't see it as a problem once we get those installed, people know where they are. As a matter of fact, I think we'll put that on our web page where they are, and even if we change it, we'll update that every quarter. So um, I think it's important for people to know that and for us to be above board. And the only reason we uh, wanted to keep it uh, quiet <laughs> as to where they were so we could just, see if they were working or not. And if we let people know where they are, then they could avoid them. Once you get so many out there, the likelihood of avoiding them is probably small. Thank you, Chief. And the other question was about going forward after fiscal year 23 on the cost. Yeah, th uh, this year's budget, there's enough to uh, allocate the uh, 75 additional, uh, it'd be 236,000. Going forward, it'd be 250 uh, for the 100 cameras is what we're looking at. Thank you. My time's up, and I'm sure there's going to be other questions, and I'll probably come back for my five minutes because I knew my five would go quick here. Thank you. All right. Thank you. If you all will just stay a minute, I think there will be more questions. I'm first going to ask if anyone on the list has a question about this item. Councilmember Fred Brown, no. Councilmember Liz Sheehan, do you want to go ahead and, and uh, ask your questions? Thank you, Mayor. Um, we had a council discussion about this in a presentation in our October planning and public safety meeting. And at that meeting, I had asked for some comparison data. Like, is there, can you show increased effectiveness um, based on, you know, data from the past on crime solved, vehicles recovered, that kind of information. And at that time, you had said you needed a few more months to have that data. And I, I, we had 
And at that time, we had just um, installed the 25th camera. Um, so we have told the public that we would pilot this project for a year, and, and we've been very vocal about that, even with reserving money um, in our current year budget. So um, I am a little bit uncomfortable moving forward with this when we have said we would pilot it for a full year, but then also I haven't seen the, the data um, on the actual comparison on like month to month or year to year. So do you have that available now? So I've got one, uh, one, statistic, one statistic we can look at. So you know, the quirky thing about numbers are it's really hard to measure a lot of the stuff that you see with this. We can't measure the, the crime we prevented. We can't measure what somebody was gonna do with a gun that we caught somebody in a car with uh, later on down the line. So we can't quantify that. We can't quantify the uh, multiple murder suspects that were from other jurisdictions that were here. You know, we don't know if they were gonna run out of money and then start armed robbery. So we really can't quantify that. So I have nothing to really compare to. The only real thing I can compare to is looking at our recovered stolen vehicle data. <clears throat> the problem with that also is we're only looking at what happens in Fayette County. We're not looking at all the cars that we have recovered from other jurisdictions. So in that, we have seen an increase in recoveries with the flock cameras uh, compared to the last two years of 2020, 2021. Uh, 2021, there was overall from um, month to month 67.5% this year up to right now, because we're not through this year, we're up to 70.4%. Uh, if you look at the data specifically through 2022, <clears throat> you can see there is a large uptick in recoveries in March. That was our first camera was installed. I think we had two or three that were installed in March, and we saw a little bit of a lull. And then in June, we started to get more influx of our cameras being installed through the months of uh, the middle of August. We saw an increase, a uh, double-digit increase from May to June, and then held steady. And even this month, we're up to 82%. I'm sorry, 81.3, 81.3% recovered so far just this month. So we have seen a marketable increase just in recovered vehicles. But that's only one very small aspect of what we're seeing. The flock camera system allows us to, it allows every officer within this whole agency to use it. It allows the line officer on the street to be able to look at something immediately to get, hey, was this car even involved? So it could exonerate somebody and cut them loose so we're not holding somebody when we shouldn't be holding them. And it also allows them to go to a specific area to find a specific, a specific vehicle associated with a crime, meaning they don't have to drive around all the city. So the man hours of work hours spent trying to find something specific for a line officer is cut. <clears throat> when we look at investigations, we see the same thing. It, there's a couple instances of a couple cases we've talked about in the presentation and a few we haven't, where if it wasn't for the flock system of having a vehicle captured with a license plate on it, we wouldn't be able to solve that crime. So that crime went from potentially days, weeks, months of sending information, emails, calls, texts, trying to find out who this person is to literally take into about five minutes. To me, that's a huge marketable increase. That's the reason we want to go ahead and implement the other 75 cameras. We're seeing such a great return on our, well, I'll say on our investment, we haven't invested anything, but we see such a huge return so far, there's no sense in waiting, in my opinion, to allow something for the community to better it <clears throat> and also to allow victims some kind of reparations when they get their vehicles back. When they're a victim of a crime, we can go find that person quicker. Okay, I, and I appreciate that. Thank you for bringing that information um, and having some of the updated statistics for us. Um, I, I still have some concerns about some of the steps that haven't been taken um, and that we, we hear concerns from the community and we have said we would pilot this for a certain amount of time before we start allocating more resources. So I'm still hesitant to move this forward until we have actually completed the pilot program that we said we would for the time that we said we would, so we have the full data set. Um, and I also, um, I think in the past it has been asked uh, that we have the Racial Justice and Equality Commission um, review this policy because there have been some concerns around um, policing in communities of color. And so I think that is a, an important issue that we need to address for the community. So I would like to see some of that information come forward. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mayor. you. Uh, Vice Mayor, did you want to speak to this specific issue? All right. I do. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you for providing some of that information. I, I, I share some of the same concerns. Um, given the uh, importance that the community places on this and the questions that um, have been raised about uh, privacy issues, and I know that we've been given a lot of information, but um, it seems to me, as 
Councilmember Sheehan has said, what we told the public was that this would be a one-year pilot project, and at the end of that time, we would review the data, and we would make some comparisons with what we got with the flock cameras from what we got maybe in the previous year, um, and if there are other data that would be useful for us to have, that we ought to have it. But to move it forward without that data, it seems to me, kind of circumvents the process. So I will, um, if there are other people who wish to speak to this, I'll be happy to hold off, but I will have a motion. Uh, I'll come back. Thank you. Thank you. Chief, you stepped forward. Did you yes, want uh, to respond? You know, as far as the pilot program continuing for a year, the way I understood it is that we actually set aside the money in a current fiscal year uh, in case it did show promise. So the pilot project was for a year was what the company offered. And we agreed with the company that we would enter into it if they could give it to us at least for a year. Uh, I don't think we were being uh, duplicitous or, or lying about anything. Uh, we, actually, we actually figured just because of some of the returns that we might have to do it earlier. I don't think there was a promise. I think uh, we entered into it uh, above board and now we see the fruits of it. And uh, you know, people are getting victimized. What are we waiting for? I hear all this talk about uh, racial inequality, but nobody said anything or seen anything, and we've had it for six months. Have any of y'all got any complaints about it? Even around the country where this has been used, it's been used for several years in several places, and we've been looking for it, and we do our due diligence and we do our research. This only tracks license plates and uh, colors of cars, not anything else. There's no other information associated with it except the pictures. You don't, the information of who those uh, license plates belong to is not stored in the system. It is information that's only accessible through law enforcement. Um, I appreciate the concerns, because I live in this community too, and I have those same concerns. But what I also see is I see, <laughs> I see people getting victimized, uh, and they're not getting the same help as people on the other side. This is, I want this program to keep criminals at bay, you know? And if it can't keep them at bay, at least it helps us catch them to prosecute them. But I hear all this talk, but I also talk to people in the community, and people are coming up to me going, when are we getting those cameras? Can I buy one? Can I have one? That's what I see, and I don't know who you all are talking to, but I talk to a lot of people everywhere, and I don't see anybody coming up to me saying, Chief Weathers, thank you for getting my car back, and, uh, but uh, the method you use to get it back, I, I just don't think that's right. I haven't had anybody say that, and you will never hear anybody say that. Uh, we pride ourselves on being for the community. That's why we have a policy to regulate it. Nobody else thought of that. Your police department thought of that because it's worried about people's rights. I'm not trying to jump ahead on anything here. I just want to get people, I just want to give people a fair chance that uh, at least this council is thinking about their rights too. Thank you, Chief. And we have a few more. Uh, Councilmember Reynolds is yours about this issue. He, he, no, he. Thank you, Mayor, um, and thank you, Chief, for your comments. Um, so on this issue, uh, I, I personally see the value in, in this technology. Um, I have had a lot of people say to me, you know, how can we catch stolen vehicles? I had my car stolen a few years ago, um, and I understand that it's, that it's helpful. Um, and I also, know that it might be helpful in the future with shot spotter, um, which I think would be particularly um, of use when we hear shots fired, trying to find out where they come from. So I'm not against 
personally the technology or, um, or us using it. Um, that being said, I, I feel like I have a pretty good um, finger on the pulse of my district and I can tell you that some of my neighborhoods are in favor of this and some are not. And so when I represent my, my constituents, I have to take that into consideration that, um, and, I, and I try to educate and I try to talk about, um, you know, how it's used, et cetera. But even still, there are some communities that are, that are very concerned about this. <clears throat> and as, you know, Council Member Sheehan said, we, we were operating, whether it was intention or not, under the assumption that we would take a whole year to evaluate this in our community and see how it works um, and move forward. So that's why we're kind of a little bit hesitant, I think. Um, and our process was kind of, um, different, right, because we had this in committee, and and we were under the pressure this would come back to either the whole council or the committee with an update to say, hey, look how it's working, now we're making the suggestion that we move forward with 100 cameras, um, instead of it being on our docket and, you know, a, a big to-do about it and then being on our docket. So I think um, I, I would like to be able to for us to, as a group to really evaluate this um, and, and take some time to move forward. Not saying we're not gonna move forward um, or that it's not important, just that maybe the process in which we've done that um, hasn't gone the way that a lot of us had liked. So um, I just wanted to express that and that I am put in a tough position, um, but that doesn't mean that I'm not, I'm not supportive of, of the technology, just the process um, and, and how we how we um, move forward. So, I just wanted to make that statement. Thank you, Thank Council you. Member War. Uh, I'm sorry, Council Member Legree. Was your question about this item? Uh, thank you, Mayor, and and thank you to my colleagues, and um, and thank you for all the information that's been shared thus far. Um, you know, many of my questions have been covered. I had a question about comparative data. Um, and I would love to see that data um, presented to our Planning and Public Safety Committee. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd love to see quarterly data. I think that's something that had been discussed. I'm, I might be mistaken there. Um, I also believe that um, giving this more time uh, allows for more public education. It allows for more public engagement. And it allows for um, more public input. I have the privilege of um, speaking to members of law enforcement and um, officials here um, in LFUCG about the use of these cameras. I have access to a lot of information. And um, with more time, I have more opportunities to share that information with my constituency and to hear their questions. Um, and what I wanna advocate for is that we get closer to that one year mark. Um, and I do understand the use of this technology and I really appreciate all the ways in which our websites and our public information office, you know, that, that we've been kept updated. Um, but based on the, the assumptions, I think, and I understand we had these 25 flock cameras um, and we had them for a one-year pilot and it is my understanding it was a, a free program and that's why it was a one-year program. But I, th I think publicly there's the, the, the feeling that this was meant to be a one-year pilot program for various reasons. Um, and, and so that's what I want to advocate for. I know we have this in committee. I know we had a recent update. And um, I would like for us to have a little more time. We have budgeted these funds. Um, and that means that moving forward is, is fairly simple. Um, and so therefore, um, I, uh, for the sake of transparency and, and information sharing, um, that's that's what I wanted to state. So I don't have a question, Mayor. Uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilmember Worley. Was your question about this? Yes, ma'am. Please. So, th thank you, Mayor. And so, for some of my colleagues, I think we, there may be some different recollections here. But it, my recollection is more of what the chief's recollection is of the process, and that a one-year pilot was offered by the company for free. Um, and not that we accepted that under the provision that it, one year was going to be required to determine the efficacy of, uh, of this tool. 
and the process that's been through, this has seen significant public transparency to this point. Uh, this was blue sheeted to accept the pilot. Questions were asked at that time. Then there was immediately thereafter a presentation made to the Planning and Public Safety Committee in which we were educated as to how these cameras were to work. And then we said we would request additional updates down the road to show us how they worked. And in fact, the first quarter shows that not only do they work, they work unbelievably well. And so, Chief, Commander, am I right that in the Planning and Public Safety Committee just in October, just this past month, we were given an update on, on the efficacy of this. So there is, again, just recently, we were told, and am I right on these numbers, somewhere around $1.3 to $1.4 million in stolen property was recovered and delivered back to, to their owners. Dozens of firearms were, were, uh, were collected and taken off the street. Uh, people actually were found, including abducted children. And just stop, I'm, I'm, this is my recollection of the meeting we just had last month in which we talked about the efficacy of the flock cameras. Uh, violent criminals from here in Fayette County as well as other states traveling through Fayette County were apprehended by the use of the flock cameras, uh, some of which were wanted for murder in other jurisdictions, some of which were wanted for violent crimes here. Um, it, uh, is, are, is all of that information that I've said was, is that correct, Commander? Yes, sir. It actually has gone up, I think about 1.5 million as of Monday. Uh, I think we're up to 36 or 38 firearms has been recovered because of that. So yeah, I mean, we see it going up almost weekly. So I, I'm concerned when we talk about some of these perceived questions we still have that can always continue to be answered and continue to be studied when we're getting hard numbers of criminal activity that these have that these flock investigative cameras have helped our police officers investigate so while we have a police shortage in this community are we going to continue to turn around and say every technology that helps them we just we, we need to wait longer we need to wait longer we we can't wait longer if at any point any of these questions we have comes and answers that we're unsatisfied with this, we take the cameras off the street. But in the process, if we don't get them out there now and if we don't continue to use them as they're intended to be used, there's crimes committed on their streets. And we continue to see violent crime in this community and our public is asking us to do something. Our officers are telling us this is helping them and this is working. And we can talk about the process, we can talk about questions we have, for the better part of a year, we have talked about in various different stages this tool. And we, in fact, talked about it in the budget process when we approved the $275,000 to purchase the cameras. So we've already envisioned that in this fiscal year, long before the one-year pilot would roll around, that we may buy these cameras. So the one-year pilot was about 25 cameras. We know they work. We know 100 will work better. We also know that with 100, we can increase public transparency by telling people where the cameras are. When there's only 25, the chief believes we're at risk at diminishing the value of the, of, the, of, the, of the policy, or excuse me, of the tool. With 100, he says, I think I can tell everybody where they are and we'll still be just so. By increasing the, the use of this tool, we increase the transparency. So now is the time, we gotta move forward on this, we have to take advantage of this opportunity right now. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Kleber, is your question on this issue? All right. Thank you, Mayor. The first thing that I, I want to say is just to remind everyone that correlation is not causation. And you normally have to sift through a lot of data in order to figure out how these things work. In a conversation I had with the chief a while back, he said that when we're dealing with crime statistics, we should not look at anything less than five years. It's just a good policy that we should look at a five year period. We've only had these cameras out there all of them for two months or less. If a quarterback throws a touchdown on his first play, you don't immediately say they're gonna win the Heisman. You play the whole season. Well, we're not even through the first game yet. We don't have statistics, we don't have data. The information we have is within a margin of error. We're sitting here talking about all the good it's doing. We don't know what the fluctuations in the economy, what the post-pandemic situation is, is influencing this. We don't have a good snapshot of what this data actually means. That's the reason you do a full length pilot. That's the reason you're committed to looking at the data. Right now, we can't say this is working. 
aside from just being aspirationally hopeful that it's working. You could say right now things look somewhat promising, but just like that quarterback throwing his first touchdown on his first play, you can't say they're gonna be the greatest of all time. Right now, we should continue to do what we committed to do, which is evaluate this program. And you know what? It may come out positive, but it may come out negative. We don't have the information yet, and it's definitely premature in the process for us to push this through right now. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Lamb, is your, yours to this item? Thank you, Mayor. And um, I appreciate what all my colleagues are saying, and uh, um, you know, this goes back to the no-knock warrants when we were discussing all of this, and you know, I, I tried to wrap my head around this, and I have heard from a sundry of people on both sides of this, for and against, but personally, I know we have heard our police chief and our public safety um, officers, our, our, our police officers, time and time again, saying that the community members are not, you know, they're scared. They're scared to bring evidence forward. I'd be scared if I witnessed a crime and they knew I witnessed it, I'd be scared to bring forward a name of somebody. These cameras do help in that. Um, I'm not gonna act like I know what I'm talking about. I've just heard this and I, I believe it's factual. Uh, we just got through with a, um, a very dramatic election year. And the one thing that I kept hearing, and I wasn't running so I can speak to this, the one thing that I kept hearing resonate in our community was public safety. How can crime in our communities be lessened? How can we be safe to live in our neighborhoods? And I, I mean, our chief is standing here today telling us that this tool is a very important tool. It has proven so far, even though it might be in a small time frame. And I realize that, that, um, that we're all operating on what we want to make sure that we follow a, a year um, a, a year of, of testing it and everything but I guess my theory is is that it took us a number of, of months to be able to receive the cameras and install them and so I theoretically am, am saying that if we are if we do move this forward it's still going to be a number of months before the cameras will be received and much less installed. So in that time frame, I believe I would expect that that year period would come to fruition and there would be an opportunity to discuss and to look at data and and um, I think at that time that if there was something that the council going forward saw that there was concerns about, that you could change your mind at that time. Um, but I think that given the opportunity that what I am hearing from our police chief and our public safety uh, officers that that it is effective and you know at this point in our community and in every community across our country we're all dealing with extensive crime issues and in our neighborhoods and it makes us feel not safe in our homes and I feel like that if we can do something that helps to enable our police officers to be able to address crime in a quicker manner, I can't help but to sit here and support that. Um, so I, it is my hope that we can move this forward today. I realize, and, and I, I, I want people to know that, you know, just because you approve it today doesn't mean that the cameras are gonna be installed tomorrow. It'll be months. So, so, so give this opportunity to move this forward. And um, I, I hope that, um, that we will. I won't be here next year to vote on this, but, um, but it's my hope that we can, we can affect positive changes to the crime in this community that, that was a big highlight in our elections this past year. So I'm listening to that, and that's the reason that I would support this to move forward today, and I hope my colleagues will think about that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Council Member Baxter is yours to this item. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> just to follow up on Council Member Lamb's comment about the, the installation period or the lead time to get the cameras, can you speak a little bit about that? 
So once we have a signed uh, agreement, it would be, I would expect nothing to start happening in Flatford the first of the year. Because we're getting into the holiday season, we still have to have a wet signature, it has to go uh, to the company, they have to accept it. We have to do a deployment plan with them, if the locations we're looking at, we have to then fine tune those. If I'm looking at what we did in the 25, if we're gonna put 75, that's gonna take a little bit longer. So I would expect nothing to really start happening, sorry, nothing to start happening until January. And I would expect the rollout process probably to take roughly about three months. Three months, okay. Um, thank you. So it's, it's no secret that I am a huge proponent of the flock cameras and my position has been um, solid on that. Um, Commander Greathouse and I have spoken about other technologies that we have invested in that would, um, that we spent more on that are only division specific. And he made mention a minute ago that this is one technology that is relatively inexpensive and touches every single person in our police department. Every single individual that works for our police department has access to this program and, and utilizes it. <clears throat> and so to piggyback off of what, excuse me, what Councilmember um, Worley said, <clears throat> excuse me, we've talked about this several times over the last year. Um, just recently in committee, we left committee, I went back and I watched the video because I wanted to make sure I had it right. But we, we came out of committee saying that we didn't need to take any action at that time because we had already allocated the dollars and we asked that the administration come to us with an implement, implementation and expansion plan when the time was appropriate. So my, all of my colleagues, are, the ones that have spoken today have said, the public has, is out crying for help. We have the chief standing here saying, this is technology that boosts our officers' morale. It is an extra tool in their tool belt. So it is very hard for me to sit right here and say, no, I think we need to take a little bit more time to think about it. We have, I feel like we've talked about it until we're blue in the face. <laughs> um, I, I feel like it's, I feel like it has proven its efficacy and its um, benefit to our community. So I am strong support of moving this forward and, um, and I hope that my colleagues will support it as well. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member McKern, are you wanting to speak to this issue? Yes, okay. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Chief Commander, thank you both for speaking on this and standing in front of us advocating for it. Uh, I, like Council Member Baxter, have not wavered on my opinion about this either and I'm a huge fan of these. Um, and in speaking with the community, I mean, most of the community did have concerns at first, and I appreciate that. I appreciate the things that they said in addressing those, but as Chief, as you mentioned just a little bit ago, the only color that's taken on these photos is of the vehicle. It's not about the image of the person, it doesn't matter who the driver is, it's about the vehicle and the license plate, whether it's stolen or they have a warrant out. So in case, I don't know about the rest of this council, but for myself, if you're doing something wrong, and you shouldn't be doing something wrong, this is something that's working, this is a tool that's needed. Um, one of my colleagues made a comment about the time frame that this has been implemented for. We started putting this in March, they started being installed, correct? And every month since that point, we have only seen an increase of assets and recovery and uh, arrests made, is that correct? And, the only thing that moving forward this is going to do is help that. It's only going to help secure our future, our city, everything that everybody's talking about. But the biggest thing that stands out to me is that we've had a child that was missing or an Amber Alert as a father. I would want my son back, want my sons back to me as soon as possible. I would not want to wait on that at all. And if this is a tool that's helping all of our officers or the morale or any family, any child, anybody in the city, I think we need to do it now. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Plowman, is this is yours to this question? Yes, it is, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you um, Chief. And, um, you know, I really kind of don't get it in terms of why this would not be supported 110%. Um, here is a tool that's been in use for a very short time, and you've already seen just so many results. And listening to our police chief, your passionate um, support of a tool that not only helps you all do your work, 
but has results that impact our whole community. So in my mind, I'm like, the bottom line is public safety. If this is working and it's proved that it's work, why would we not to want to accelerate it and bring in more opportunities to help us with public safety? So I wholeheartedly support this. I can't understand why we wouldn't move along, so I would, uh, I would ask our colleagues to also support this. It's, it's very timely, it's working, and, um, and one last thing, when I'm asked about public safety in our community, I use these cameras as an, as an, uh, an example of things that we are proactively doing to make sure that we're on top of it. So I'm with you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councilmember James Brown is yours to this item. Ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And um, thank you, Chief and Commander, for the presentation. Um, so, Chief, we haven't received any complaints in regards to uh, the concerns in regards to over-policing or inequities in regards to these cameras so far. Do we, do, I mean, do we have, have we not received any, anything to that? I, I'm, I'm not aware of any, and uh, we were very intentional about our placement and very aware that people were concerned about uh, over-policing issues, and we're still going to take that tact, even when we uh, uh, install the additional 75. So, no, sir, there's, I'm not aware of any complaints that we receive. Okay. So, you know, and I think that's important to note because, you know, that's, that's where I think the hesitation lies, and I think that's where the concerns lie in regards to this technology. If, um, If you haven't lived in a neighborhood that you feel is over-policed, or if you haven't been in a community that you feel is over-policed, then you wouldn't understand what the real concern is. So, and I have, and I understand the concern. But from, you, from your perspective, and I haven't heard anybody complain about, other than the concerns, they haven't complained about it being actual. The, the real concern that I heard was not knowing where they're gonna be located. And, you know, being on council, I had privy to the information where they were located, the 25 pilot cameras. I was fine because they were dispersed across the community. I can see where the, the fear and the concern that 75 or 100 can be concentrated, a large portion can be concentrated. But what alleviates my concern about that is the disclosure of the locations. And if we know where they are, if it's an issue that arises, then we can address it, I think, uh, going forward. And the other thing about this, and I'll, I'll give credit to our police department and the administration, uh, the policy, and we're policy makers, that's what's gonna protect our department, that's what's gonna protect our community, that's what's gonna protect our uh, residents in regards to how this tool is gonna be used going forward, the effectiveness of it, and if whether or not folks are gonna get disproportionately impacted by it. So I think we have to continue to monitor the use of the tool. I think we have to continue to adjust the policy and make sure that the policy governs this tool the way that we want it to. Uh, when we talked about it in committee a month ago, I think we sent it to the Racial Justice um, and the Equality Commission. Uh, I think it's on their schedule to be looked at next week. Um, I think we can leave the item in committee uh, continue to get feedback about how we may want to adjust that policy and see what their concerns may be going forward. Um, but I think Council Member Lamb is right. Um, it was a contentious in, in uh, election season that we just came out of. North, south, east, and west, everybody was concerned and is concerned about public safety. And I think if we have an opportunity to make our community safer, make the folks in our community feel safer and give our officers the tools to keep us safer. I think that's what we need to do. So I'm supportive of, of this pro, uh, program moving forward. I do understand the concerns, truly. Uh, but the folks in my neighborhood associations, the folks in my communities are supportive of, it, are supportive of it as well. And you know, this is the process. If folks have concerns and they want to come down and share them with us, come. We still have two more meetings uh, today. We got a council meeting Thursday. We have a work session on Tuesday and another council member council meeting on next Tuesday. 
So come and share those concerns uh, with us if you have them. Um, so with that, that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Council Member Sheehan, did you want to speak again to this issue? Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Chief, I just wanted to correct or uh, say something to, to clarify what my remarks before. I did not want to imply that I thought you were being duplicitous. So I, I understand uh, I understand what you're saying and, and the passion that you have for this and, and the need for the tool. Um, I do think that though it's our job to fully vet things and, and look at policy and really carefully look at data. And so I do have emails from constituents um, about concerns over this program and I think it's my job to share it and ask the questions in this forum and have this discussion. Um, but I, I did not want to imply that, that, that there was any kind of sense of a lie being told about this pilot program. I think we have been communicating about it being a year-long program. So I, I just want to be very clear that I did not think that. And I, I do um, think we have a lot to do to educate people about the technology and what it does and doesn't do. Um, but I just wanted to clarify that point. Uh, can I yes, go ahead. Uh, I apologize. I I was trying to speak in in general terms, and and I just I just want to say, <laughs> Councilmember Sheehan, ask a lot of questions, and that's what we need. I mean, um, as I look up here at the council, it, you know, y'all have to ask questions of us. You know, that's how we get better, and you do have your <laughs> fingers on the on the pulse. Uh, of your districts, so I have to I have to listen to you, and, and I will listen to you. Uh, uh, I'm passionate about this because I live here. You know, uh, I'm not going anywhere. My family lives here, and I want this to be a I want this to be a safe community. And when I see something like this that that has that potential, you, you know, it, what's been said up here is right. You know, just because we vote on it today doesn't mean that's the end all be all because I still have to listen to you all <laughs> and, and I appreciate I appreciate that and I, I did not mean any disrespect or anything I was just talking in general terms so thank oh, yeah. you. I didn't I didn't think you meant it that way but I just wanted to clarify that that's not what I was saying um, and and I um, I think as we have continued discussion with this, and, and Council Member Brown is right, there will be opportunities for the public to continue to give us feedback as we move forward in this. Um, but I, I appreciate the continued discussion that we're having, um, and, I, and I'll continue to look at the data. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor, to this issue. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So I want to I wanna kind of back up half a step and, and maybe put this in a larger context. I don't think there's any question that the big issue for this community in this last election was public safety. And I think there's reason for that. Um, like Councilmember Brown, I've lived and I do live in a part of the community that has both suffered from their perspective from over-policing and from under-policing. And I understand the balance between those two things. I understand how important public safety is to this community. Now, also from the larger context, there are privacy issues, and it's not just about these cameras. It's generally about the way in which people feel that their privacy has been invaded in any number of ways over which they have no control. And maybe that doesn't become a political issue in this community, but I believe people have those concerns, and this set of cameras falls into that category, fairly or not. So when I think about it, what I want to be able to do is to say to people who ask me about it, I've done all my due diligence. I have done due deliberation. I have data about the um, results of the use, and I have, I have information about who has access to the data. I have information about how often they have access. 
I have information about the protocol for their gaining access. These are all things that I think we need to have more information about in council before we make this kind of a decision. We're not talking about taking cameras away. What we're talking about is what the timing will be when we consider whether to add cameras or not. And with all due respect to all of the comments that have been made, I don't feel at this point that we have enough information for me personally or perhaps other people on the council to be able to say to the people who have this legitimate concern, we have addressed the issues, I've seen the data, I've seen the protocols, and I feel comfortable saying this is not about your privacy. And if, Chief, you want to respond before I? No, go ahead. <laughs> um, I think that, except for the fact that I would like to make a motion. I think that's your time is now. Thank you. And I move to delete item K from the uh, um, yeah. From the list of continuing new business. Is there a second? Second. Councilmember Kloiber seconds. Is there discussion? Councilmember Lamb? What was the motion again? The motion is to delete item K from new business. <clears throat> well, Any questions, comments? Well, I'm not finished, Fre Council actually. Member, I'm, okay. Let thanks. me first ask, Councilmember Fred Brown, are you on the list for a future item? C yes. Okay. okay, Council Member, War I'm going to use the list then for comments on the motion. Council Member Worley. Thank you, Mayor. And I certainly won't uh, continue to belabor the point and rehash everything that I've just said, but the effectiveness of this, of this program is, has proven itself. And to, to delay it any further uh, delays this community uh, a public safety tool that will make it safer. And we've been told that at a minimum it's going to take three months if we agree now to bring these on. I think we started talking about this in March last year. I don't know when we're starting our, our year mark for the pilot program, but it's about run out. It's time to take advantage of an opportunity. Our chief says that he needs it. Our chief says that it helps. Do we trust our chief? I do. I think our community does. Let's do something that helps our police help us and make us safer. Delay for something that we think we're going to inevitably do anyway. We all generally like it, but we kind of have a question here. We kind of have a question there. Just need a little more time. We know that this works. It's clear that the majority of us support this. There's no just cause for delay. Let's move it forward now. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Cloyver. We don't know that this works. We don't have the data. We don't have the information. That's what this pilot process is about. It's getting the data that allows all of us to say this is actually working. We don't have a comparison between how many vehicles were stolen more this last year versus the year before or the year before that. We don't have that data comparing the trend lines of where these things are working. We don't know that it works. You can't know something's working in just two months. And to move it forward based on that premise, our job is to trust but verify. And yes, we trust our police, we trust our chief, but it's our job to do the diligence. It's our job to vet it with actual data. I will, not be, I will be supporting deleting this item. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak to the motion? All right, all those, oh, Council Member Reynolds, did you want to speak to the motion? Yes, I would like to make an amendment to the motion. I do not want to delete it, but I would like to postpone the item. Until when? Um, until uh, after the first of the year, close to uh, a year of the, of the flat cameras. So after the first of the year, there has to be a specific date. I think you have to have a date. Okay, then I move to postpone until February. First? First. I don't have the calendar in front of me, I'm sorry. There's a motion to amend to delay this until February 1st. Thank you. Is there a second? 
Councilmember Legree seconds. Now, if you want to discuss the amendment, please log in. All right, all those in favor of the amendment to delay till February 1st, please log in your vote. We have one, we need one more. There we go. Uh, this motion fails. Uh, yay, four, nay, 10, and one absent. Now, the motion on the floor is to delete item K from the new business. Does anyone wish to speak? All right, all those in favor, please log in. All those opposed, log in. All right, that motion, that motion fails with 10 nay, four yay, and one absent. Thank you very much. Now, we, thank you, Chief. Thank you, Commander Greathouse. We will continue with new business. So if you um, wish to speak,